We are joined exclusively by the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis. Governor, thank you for being here. Overnight polling must have been really bad for Biden's big fascism speech, given the whiplash he gave everybody today. What was your initial reaction when you first heard what he said? Well, I thought it was one of the most uh, disgusting speeches an American president has ever given. He uh, ran as being a unifier, and he's basically saying to the vast majority of the country that disapproves of him uh, that they're effectively a threat to the republic. He dodders, he lashes out, uh, but at the end of the day, his policies are why there's so much opposition to him. He came in and he opened the border, and we've seen what a disaster that's been. He kneecapped American energy. We've seen how that's hurt millions and millions of people across our country. They've inflated the currency. We have one of the worst inflations we've had in over 40 years. So, of course, people are going to be upset at all the wreckage that he's left in his wake. He is the American Nero. He's a failed leader, and I think that he is doing this because he's trying to energize his base to fend off uh, a real butt whip in this November. Uh, Governor, to what do you attribute the flip-flopping here? Is this senility or is this self-preservation because he saw the polling on this speech and the reaction? Look, it's been said that the president of the United States is whoever is feeding his teleprompter. And so they fed that teleprompter in in Philadelphia last night, and he angrily delivered that speech and lashed out at his fellow countrymen. Today, he was asked off the cuff, and he said something totally opposite. But I note, Raymond, they're tweeting from his account the same nasty stuff that he said last night. And so I think the people that are in control of the White House uh, want to drive this message uh, that people that dissent from his policies are somehow second-class citizens. And think about it. They've been willing to mobilize the administrative apparatus of government to go after people they don't like. Remember, this time last year, mm -hmm. they were imposing vax mandates. They wanted people to lose their job based on getting an mRNA shot or not. And unfortunately, I think the weaponization of this government is something, when you talk about 87,000 IRS agents, who's that going to go after? Mm. It's going to go after the people that he was attacking in his speech last night. Mm. Governor, here's what Biden said about acceptable Republicans. Watch this. Not every Republican embraces their extreme ideology. I know because I've been able to work with these mainstream Republicans. American democracy only works only if we choose to respect the rule of law and the institutions that were set up in this chamber behind me. Only if we respect our legitimate political differences. Uh, Governor, who made Biden the passport officer of mainstream Republicanism? And does the governor of Florida fit in that definition, do you think? Well, look, he talks about rule of law. What has he done? He's violated his oath of office to take care that the laws are faithfully executed by opening the border. He's not following the law there. Look what he did with the student loan bailout. Congress never authorized that. He's citing a law from September 11th to somehow give loan forgiveness and put it on the backs of the taxpayer for people with degrees in gender studies. So spare me this idea of the rule of law. He doesn't give a darn about the rule of law. And yes, the only Republicans he likes are Republicans that want him to get his way. If you stand up against his bad policies like we do in Florida, then of course he's going to try to write you out over who's acceptable as an American citizen. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, if Kevin McCarthy becomes speaker, I, I, is he an acceptable Republican? Republican or not? Is he not going to speak to the Speaker of the House? I rather doubt it. Governor, last night we saw two Marines standing at attention behind Biden. At least one veterans group says they're reduced to props. Here's how the White House press secretary defended it. The presence of the Marines at the speech was intended to demonstrate the deep and abiding respect uh, the president has for these service, service members, uh, to these ideals uh, and the unique role our independent military plays in defending our democracy. Governor, you're a veteran. Your reaction to that? Yeah, I mean, he's using those Marines as a prop for a partisan attack on half the country. Uh, I think that that's something that is, uh, doesn't sit well with a lot of veterans. And I'd also say he respects veterans. He respects active duty. He has kicked out 
military members based on the COVID jab. That's mm. not respect in my book. We've lost a lot of good people who wanted to serve, but for his mandates. Yeah, well, some are saying it was also a way to underscore his war talk, if you will. And they keep saying this is not a political speech, but sure it sounded like it. And the imagery was quite aggressive, like the Praetorian Guard surrounding him there. Yeah, look, and then I think you look at the way he's weaponized federal agencies, it all plays into this idea uh, of him mobilizing government uh, against people he doesn't like. And he has done that time and time again, and I think he's going to continue to do it. And if Republicans do take control, they need to hold them accountable, because I think it's likely to get worse uh, if he loses in the midterms. Governor, we knew school closings during COVID were devastating, but this national test results, uh, it, this report card, shows that the pandemic erased two decades of progress in math and reading. Democrats are now trying to blame Republicans, which we'll get to a bit later in the show. But I have to ask you, you took a lot of criticism for reopening those schools early in Florida. What is your message tonight for those trying to blame you and Trump for these educational setbacks? Well, first of all, the pandemic didn't cause those setbacks. Lockdown policies of Democrat governors, Anthony Fauci, uh, national teachers unions who wanted schools closed, they are the ones that caused that. In Florida, we said you have a right to be in school and you need to be in school. And we've done much better as a result. But it wasn't the pandemic because all it required was leadership to say we need to keep kids in school. And those Democrats and those unions and the left and Fauci, they chose ideology over what was right for those kids. And the damage is going to be lasting, regardless of what Fauci wants to tell you. Governor, before I let you go, we see the polls tightening, the generic polls moving into these uh, generic ballots, moving into the midterms. What would be your advice to the Republican Party? What notes should they strike in these closing days? And how should they counter what we heard from President Biden last night? Well, hold Biden accountable. This is a referendum on his failures. Mm -hmm. Make sure everybody knows how his policies have contributed to the mess we're in. Uh, and then articulate what you will do to address things like the border, like crime, uh, like mm -hmm. inflation. I think if you do that, I think Republicans are going to win both chambers. And I think it'll be a really good night. Governor Ron DeSantis, thank you for making the time. Happy Labor Day to you. And uh, we'll talk to you soon, I hope. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.